Hi, my name is Cody West, and I'm going to talk to you about our study, which looks at OpenSSH updates over time. And so we generally know that unpatched software is a problem, but we don't necessarily know if this problem is getting better over time or not. And so our goal became to measure this by gathering a large amount of data from the public facing internet and see what we can make of it. For this, we utilized Census, which scans the internet periodically and saves that data historically. And so with researcher access, we were able to explore this. We downloaded several large snapshots at first just to explore different ports and what version information we can get. But then, spoiler, we settled on OpenSSH and downloaded weekly snapshots from October 2015 through the end of 2020. As an example, here are a few of those banners what we were able to grab and the software that is associated with them. So we can see a lot of these have version info, stuff that didn't have version info is not useful to us. Um, in the case of OpenSSH, we can see there's something else there. Um, Apache, they actually include several different versions, so the OpenSSL version, etc. And so we can actually map those version numbers to a release date of software utilizing GitHub and software-specific change logs. And basically with this, we can get, for each snapshot in time, we can get the days since release um, at that point in time that a software was released. So in this case, this version of Apache was released on this given date. The snapshot was taken on this other given date. We can just calculate the difference. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, but it's not very actionable because just knowing the age since that software was first made available um, doesn't really tell us if it's outdated or not because if the release cycle is every week, maybe that's pretty outdated. But if the release cycle means that a new version of Apache is only released every six months, then six months uh, old is not too bad. So we do revise this by looking at the days since the software was superseded, or in other words, the days that an administrator could have updated the software. Um, and that helps, but as we'll see here, uh, still it actually is a very surface level view because Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Debian, Ubuntu, they're all examples of Linux distributions that backport security patches into software in their repositories. And so, these will often contain security features, or I'm sorry, security updates, but not feature updates. Um, problem with this is it does not actually increment the version number of the software. In contrast, rolling release distributions will actually just pull the latest version from the upstream software vendor. These, um, these non-rolling release distros will just patch these security patches. But unfortunately, this means that our previous measurements are off and, because we cannot always see the level of those backports. So we end up thinking software is much older than it is, or it actually is vulnerable to CVEs that it really is not. Uh, so Ubuntu and Debian do display backport level information in their OpenSSH banners, but not in other banners. Hence, we did narrow down to OpenSSH quite a bit. And so if we look at the right plot, we can see the green line, which is the age of uh, the distribution, the age of software in the census snapshot of 2020, August 8th, um, and how it's actually a lot better and more accurate than the very pessimistic view, pessimistic view of uh, not looking at backports. But with this, we can also check which CVEs apply to these backports and eliminate a lot of the false positives that only looking at the version would give us. And so this is a specific point in time looking at the percentage, or well, well, I'm sorry, the total number of IP addresses that are vulnerable to a given CVE. So I did a whole bunch of work mapping CVEs to backported patches, not just the mainline versions of OpenSSH. And this allows us to, over time, look at the percentage of IP addresses affected by at least one CVE. We can see on the left-hand plot that that is substantial almost 100% of all OpenSSH servers running on Ubuntu are vulnerable to at least one CVE. But this is because not all CVEs were given backports. So when we narrow it down to only CVEs that have backports, uh, things are a little bit better on the right-hand side, but still not amazing. Additionally, with IP address information uh, from cloud providers, we can see which cloud providers own specific IP addresses 
and then look at that same those same plots but just split up by a provider so Azure Google Cloud Amazon and we can see that in general cloud providers even with this measurement do tend to update faster and therefore not vulnerable to as many CVEs as the remainder of the internet and so this is just since the CVE is released how many are vulnerable to at least one CVE that is released at that time but we also might want to know how quickly a given patch is updated since that given patch is released because sometimes there is a delay in when a CVE is announced and when the patch for that CVE is released so this next plot on our left is just the percentage of Ubuntu OpenSSH IPs that basically have not updated to the latest patch that fixes a CVE. So a green, line, green vertical line is just a patch that was released that fixes a CVE. And we can see that some people even will update same day. But as soon as that patch is released, there's an uptick of 100% a lot of times that have not installed it because it just came out. And then many will very, very quickly install it. So this maybe is a little more actionable or gives us a better idea into the update behavior of security administrators. And on the right hand side, we can see that same information split up by cloud provider. So we, do, we are limited that we are only looking at OpenSSH on Ubuntu. Um, but with this, we can still show that um, with these backported information, we do get a more accurate picture than just looking at publicly available version information on the base version of software. Uh, we also know that backports do in fact trigger the application of security patches for many of the population and also we could see from that first plots that vulnerabilities that don't have a backport do remain unfixed for most of the, most of the time. Um, even though some people are very quick to update New vulnerabilities are coming out all the time, and most servers still will remain vulnerable to at least one CVE most of the time. Um, but we do know that cloud providers tend to do a slightly better job at keeping host patch. So with that, uh, that is all I have. Thank you very much. Any questions?